uh, just a quick little introduction again. Welcome. Um, I appreciate everyone taking a little bit of time out of their Saturday to to come hang out with us. Um, and uh, it looks like uh, today uh, we'll we'll have a talk on uh, Amazon Alexa. I gotta be actually. I gotta, I gotta be very quiet when I say that word. I'll, otherwise, I'll I'll activate Skynet in my house. Um, so uh, <laughs> um, anyway. Um, yeah, I'm not really one for introductions, so uh, I'll just say uh, I'll just hand it over to Dennis, who will be our uh, presenter for today. Um, if, feel free to unmute and ask questions as they arrive. I'll try and field them, or if you're not one to to, to feel like uh, talking, just please put them in the chat, um, and I'll do my best to to get to them as soon as I see them pop up, and then we can get them uh, addressed. So with that, I say again, welcome everyone, and uh, Dennis, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. I think you should be able to. Let me make sure that you should be able to yeah, share it. Sure. My button okay. is green. Excellent. So, awesome. All right. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Dante. Really appreciate the opportunity to give the talk. Uh, I'm not going to give myself an introduction. If you want to see who I am, you can go stalk me in uh, LinkedIn or something like that. I'm sure you can find out more about me than I know. So. Uh, but so today's talk, it's, it's going to be about Alexa. I wrote... I go to, I just, for the heck of it, I just go to school over here at El Camino. I'm doing some cloud stuff in AWS and all that. So as part of it, I learned how to, you know, to fiddle with and write an Alexa skill. And I guess there's a woman, a, a professor in Long Beach. I forget what her name. Oh, you know, I remember her first name because poor, poor thing. She, her first name's Karen. So she has to deal with that. But uh, that's all I remember. But anyway, she's... Um, has some really good info. If you want like a full class and and I'm sure Long Beach is doing a remote class. I think she has a whole class on how to build Alexa skills and a much better, you know, a uh, bit of, you know, you finish that class, you'd probably be an expert. But I'm going to give a, um, you know, sort of a fairly quick introduction. And my goal today is to help you uh, navigate around because there's something you go, well, I want to learn an Alexa skill. And you Google that and you're going to get hit with like, you know, two dozen different classes and tutorials and videos and all sorts of stuff that you, you'll just spend, you could waste an hour just trying to pick the right one. So what I hope to do today is to try to, you know, just give you sort of a quick way to um, understand kind of how Alexa, Alexa works and uh, how to develop, uh, you know, a skill for it and uh, just a, a, like a shortcut thing. And then if you want to get in, more into it, and because like I said, there's so many different uh, ways to learn how to write the skills that you could spend uh, a, a weekend doing it probably, which uh, in today's environment seems like, you know, a weekend is forever, right? Nobody's got any time. So let me uh, pull up some charts. Um, I don't know, I guess. That's probably good. And then, uh, you know, it's not all slides. Don't worry. There's a live demo. Oops. How did I do that? Uh, there we go. So let's see. Well, let's put it in presentation mode. Uh, by the way, I'll, I'll give you a quick little hint. If you ever use Google Slides, um, I might as well tell you that what, one pain about Google Slides is if you hit present, there's this little toolbar at the bottom and it keeps popping up and getting in the way. And the toolbar has like a laser beam and all this kind of stuff. And it can be, if you teach or use Google Slides to teach, it can be very irritating. So the way to avoid that stupid toolbar, which I hope, I'll show you this little hint, hopefully um, it'll be useful, is right at the end of the link to your charts, where it says edit, if you uh, preview and uh, hit return, then it's very similar to full screen. You just have to click one little thing. I'm still wrestling with the uh, interface because I got like all your Zoom links here. So I um, guess you just go down this hamburger and you say enter full screen. So now it's except for the little white bar at the bottom. Uh, you don't have that dang toolbar that keeps popping up in the lower left. So hopefully it's useful to someone. Okay, um, Dante, you can see my screen, right? 
Yes. Yep. Great. Okay. So that's me. I, I, this is one of my eight email addresses. I probably don't even answer email anymore because it's I get too much junk. So probably easier to just get to me uh, to me through Slate if you want to. So I'll give you a quick uh, set of charts of how Alexa works. Um, how you build an Alexa skill, a live demo, and Q&A, and, and, and the relevance to, um, you know, the WASP group, obviously writing Alexa skill isn't necessarily uh, relevant. Um, you can, of course, use it as a skill to support your, like, studying for certifications. I, did, I think I did a talk about, oh, Honey Code, which is another um, Amazon thing, about how you might be able to use that to uh, create an app that had a bunch of question and answers about uh, studying for the certs. And you can do the same thing with Alexa. In fact, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that the, the professor in Long Beach I mentioned, she wrote an app, or I'm sorry, a skill, uh, but that was studying for AWS certification. But you could, you could modify it to uh, security cert. And also uh, there's a, uh, what do you call it? A template, which is kind of like an example skill. Uh, by skill, I mean like you, you think of it as a, an Alexa application. Uh, but they have one where you can upload a, a spreadsheet. I saw it go by about 90 miles an hour. I didn't, I didn't have time to look at it. But you can upload a spreadsheet of questions and answers, and you can use Alexa to uh, quiz you about certification and irritate everyone else in your family if you want, probably while you're doing it. So, um, so there are some relevance, uh, relevance to security. So I'll show how Alexa works, roughly, uh, how you build your own skill quickly, like in a, you know, less than an hour, probably like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we'll do a live demo doing that, and then with some Q&A, and hopefully everything will go OK. Uh, so this is kind of how Alexa, well, first of all, I guess we could uh, take a poll. There's probably, what, like 10, 12 people in the audience. I'm curious how many of you have uh, some sort of Echo device. So Echo is the name for the hardware device typically. And Alexa is the speech recognition smarts, uh, the software inside of it or attached to it through the cloud. So I'm just curious how many of you have uh, Echo or Alexa devices. There's an Alexa app in your phone. You can actually use it to do stuff. And, uh, and I guess they're building them into cars and all sorts of stuff. So far, we got three yeps and two hard nopes. Okay. So yeah. And, and there's some I more yeses coming in. A lot of security people would say, oh, you know, goodness, no. So, uh, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, this, we talk about this a lot. You got to pick, kind of pick your poison. Uh, it's like, yeah. Uh, not, not to, I, I, I uh, what's, what am I looking for? Um, I respect any, any, everyone's, you know, values and opinions on, on the topic. I just think that um, they're going to get you some way or another, like maybe sure you don't have a, a, any like echoes and Alexas in your home, but if you have internet, man, <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it is. There's always a, a way to break in, but you know, Hey, if there wasn't a way to break in, most of the people attending here wouldn't have a job. Yeah, man. Job security. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, you know, you, the user will make a, 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 a request, typically audio, you know, and they have video devices too, but I think it's mostly passive. You know, I don't think you have to, I don't think they push. I guess, you know, maybe it has a touch sensor or something. I don't know. But uh, the other ones are these hockey puck things or dots. You make a request and it basically, I'm sure there's onboard software, but most of the smarts are in the cloud and they call it the skill interaction model. Right, it does all this uh, speech recognition, and intonation, and and it's got like multiple uh, regions. Like if you go, if you have an Alexa in like England, guess what? Your the Alexa uh, voice has a British accent, and its speech recognition is also tuned to the accent of the region. I was watching a Scottish person complain that he had to talk to his Alexa with a Cockney accent in order to get her to understand anything. It's kind of funny. Uh, so it's, it's all regionized. And uh, then, so that makes it in a request to the scale application logic. And that's the part you build. Okay. So you build, 
you build uh, sort of a combination of uh, uh, a, a program, like a Lambda function, if you know what that is, it's just like a serverless one, a triggered function, small function typically. And, um, and some JSON files, which uh, define the interaction between uh, the user, uh, both input and output and the computer. And so that's, those are typically, these request and response communications are typically expressed in JSON files. And you'll see some examples of that if you don't know what they are. And, uh, and then it comes out back and it's back to the user. And she asked, you know, what's the weather or whatever. That's basically how they work. So they don't, I've never tried to use an Alexa device that was, I guess, yeah, they just do not work if you're not, you're not connected to it internet and the cloud, they just make funny noises and complain, so. Uh, oh, and yeah, you build that part. In Python, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, numerous languages. I think originally it was just like Python and JavaScript probably. Uh, they're the ones that it tends to emphasize. And you know, it's easy to write code in those two languages, at least the amount of code you need to make this thing work, so. Uh, how do you build an Alexa skill? You, it's a lot easier than what it says here. Uh, you design your skill, build it, you test it. Uh, the last two steps, pretty much, you know, kind of optional. You do not have to certify and publish your skill. Um, and I think it's true of a lot of mobile devices now. You know, you don't have to get it approved by Apple or whatever. You can just, uh, if you get a platform to work around it. Uh, you can actually just easily uh, write and debug uh, small pieces of code for mobile devices. But uh, this is all definitely true for um, Alexa. I can, and we will today, I'll write a skill that's immediately available to all the devices I own. I don't have to get it certified or have it be nice or something. You can't, by the way, you can't put uh, pejoratives or uh, insults or nasty stuff into your code. It'll It'll figure that out. You can't have to work around it. So uh, if you want to do that, but, uh, but that's what the only restriction uh, when you go to, to write this uh, code. But if you do want to publish it, you want other people to use it, then yeah, you have to, uh, you have to go through certification all that. So you, you do all this, um, uh, so you can, work through a tutorial, which can take a while, or just to watch a YouTube video. Like I said, there's dozens and dozens of them, both AWS, uh, Amazon created and, and independent people doing that. Oh, by the way, on all the charts, I put links on the bottom. So uh, you can go find the information that you see on the chart. So there's lots of choices to do development. You can use the console, developer console. They use uh, this acronym ASK, which probably stands for Alexa skill kit, which is their ID, uh, command line interface, uh, Visual Studio. You can, there's some add-ons, I guess, for Alexa, if you like Visual Studio. Um, some other stuff, I don't know what, <laughs> the skill management API, uh, API, Smappy, or well, no, they say it that way, but there's an API for it. Um, there, I guess there's onboard skills. Which is, no, it's part of the cloud too and uh, DevOps integrations. Well, you can know, also do sorts of stuff. You integrate with anyways. Well, we're, we're the, gonna be doing the easy one today, obviously, which is gonna be the developer console, which is basically, it's a web-based uh, development environment, really easy to deal with. Um, there's uh, specialized tools to test. Alexa, I think someone in the audience asked, well, do you need an uh, Echo Dot device in order to do do this and the answer is a web based simulator of Alexa and it does all the interpretation of what you're saying. And, and it, both you can type in interaction to the simulator or you can talk to it uh, through your computer. So you don't have to spend the I don't know, 40, 50 bucks for an Echo device to actually go through this exercise. You can just write an Alexa skill. If you have a computer and internet connection, you're good to go, a computer, or you even need a microphone. You can just use, like I said, you can type in commands to it. 
very easily. So, uh, so that's the simulator. I guess there's some beta testing tool. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and all sorts of complicated stuff that uh, I, I tried to, the very bottom it says ASR e evaluation to some of it. Uh, so, so I, I actually tried to do that. I, so, uh, let me think for a second. Yeah, so I actually tried to interact with that and have some machine learning uh, to try to uh, understand the context. Uh, there's a special phrase I can't think of, but basically where uh, speech recognition understands the context of what you're talking about and uh, and interprets the, the general mood of the people talking. And I uh, wish you could think of it. There's an artificial intelligence term for that, but it basically means interpreting the mood of human beings. So, uh, so there's, but the point is, there's all sorts of complicated ways to develop Alexa skills, crazy stuff. Um, and then you can publish these skills, but again, we're not gonna worry about that today since you know we're just gonna deploy it to our local device. Uh, you can get certified, you can get your skills certified, and you can take courses. It's crazy. You know, AWS Education, or, ed, sorry, AWS Educate uh, has classes on it. And it's just amazing what you could, you could spend like your whole life learning and then never get around to doing anything, but at least you'd be smart. So, uh, and then uh, very down to very, very bottom, pre-made skills. So we actually be taking advantage of that. Uh, some code that's been written by uh, people that will just grab it, fool around with it, and modify it to uh, get a flavor of the, an idea of how, uh, the, what, how the development environment works. You know, kind of okay. Yeah, move chart. Oh, yeah. I know I probably skipped a chart. Sorry. Skipped several charts. Whenever I use Zoom and Google Slides, it always honks up my computer. There we go. Okay, so so we can start kind of. I don't know. Some of you actually might be uh, playing along with your. You may have like more than one computer. You might be trying to log on and so forth to get uh, an account with Alexa development. So um, so don't do this if you're doing that. Don't go to the obvious choice would be Alexa.com. I guess it's part of the AWS but, or Amazon, but I'm not even sure what that is. Um, all I know is it costs money and it's kind of irrelevant. I don't know. Uh, don't worry. So don't go to, don't do that. So go to, if you're playing along, go to, so go to uh, developer.amazon.com where um, it's not only Alexa, but all the other I don't know, a handful of different ways to develop, uh, develop software and applications that work with Amazon products like AWS, the Amazon retail store, the app store, whatever, Amazon Dash, I think it's, that's food. Or maybe that's, um, maybe not just food, but things you buy often or something. Yeah, replenishment, that's interesting. But yeah, the one you want is the upper left there, Amazon Alexa. So you go to that website and you click on Alexa there and you would sign in, uh, but, but be forewarned that if you, if you already own an Echo device, you should, you should associate your developer account with the account that your device is associated with. So typically, probably almost everyone in the audience has an Amazon account that they shop uh, for socks or whatever, and uh, or books. I guess these would be the only books way back, and then they branched out to CDs, which we don't buy anymore. Uh, so uh, try to use your main Amazon account because that's probably how you rec uh, would register your Echo device. I think they call them household accounts, and because if you set up a brand new email for the developer account, then it's just, it's more difficult to associate your device with that developer account. And uh, so, you know, choose your household account. And I think you can, um, if it is a household account, we have family members associated with it, then I think, you, I'm not sure, I haven't tried this yet, but I think 
if your family members own their own Echo device registered in their name, they may be able to use your skill uh, if everybody's in your household account uh, without certifying it. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I'm trying to. But uh, yeah, don't get uh, account happy and have them all over the place. Just try to use the one that you used for Amazon, um, especially the one that you used to register your Echo device, because that'll make your life easier. And there's, unfortunately, there's some more stuff uh, going on here. You have to, um, the first time you get a developer account, you have to tell them, oh, I got some personal information here, but only my name. Okay, good. It's harmless. I'm not putting anything special there. But you have to tell them who you are, where you live. I guess you can make it up. That's the wrong email. Well, I mean, that's my email address, but that's not the one associated with my uh, device. So. Um, so you do that part and then uh, you get through tutorials. So Dante, I don't know if I wanna necessarily pause, but is there, can you find out from the audience if there's anyone trying to follow along and sign up with an account? We could pause for one minute to give them time. Yeah, so far, no questions, but yeah, we, uh, curious if anyone's you know trying to do this live, follow along, uh, let us know. Um, but so far, no one's, uh, no one's chimed in. I, I definitely want to, this is something I, I definitely want to sort of try and reproduce once we're done. Uh, I, I do have a good so far, so I'm not sure if that's, if they're going along with this, but um, I do want to kind of take these slides and unpack it and then try a few things. I have tons of ideas. Hopefully uh, other people in our audience have some great ideas as well, but I think so far, so far good. Yeah, I put a link to these charts in uh, Slack. So in case you know somebody wants to just go back and do this, um, but again, there's dozens of tutorials that are probably better than mine here. That so there, uh, Jared did uh, ask, uh, would you recommend trying along right now or observe uh, and try later? Uh, that's dependent on the person. I think for me personally, I do better just paying attention to the speaker and then going back and and doing it later. Uh, but I just, if you feel like you're really, uh, quick and I'm speaking slowly and you can zip along, um, feel free, but me personally, my brain doesn't work fast enough where I could just listen to someone talking and try to reproduce what they're doing. I'm, and, and the material I'm providing, um, you definitely can do it later. You definitely can, uh. Uh, I'm, I'm in the charts. There's enough information where you will not falter. So, right. cool. So you'll hit. Um, you know, there's some. Uh, you may end up on this page where you hit a tutorial, and they have some amazing tutorials, but they take quite a while. And they kind of that. That's re one reason I mentioned GitHub is because you kind of have to know what you're doing. Because I took some tutorials a year ago or whenever I first felt, started fooling around with this stuff. And I just would follow along and, you know, but now you get partway through the tutorial and they, they just dump you on a GitHub page. And it's like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> do I try to download the software? Do I try to, bring, how do I bring in someone's GitHub page? And for those of you who don't know what GitHub is, I'll just, it's a place where you can um, post. If you write software and you're a software developer and you want, uh, companies to know who you are and what you've done. That's the professional place to upload software. It has version control and and uh, you know parallel deployments and and uh, you know all the kind of problem reporting and all the kind of cool stuff you associate with uh, you know version uh, you know software control uh, development control kind of stuff. So, uh, but you know I didn't. And I clicked on some of the links for one of the pages I was interested in. The links are dead and stuff. Like that. So, you know, sometimes that stuff is really... So the tutorials are great, but they're pretty time consuming. I'm not going to take you through a tutorial today because um, it would just it would take too long. And um, it's, uh, but if you really want to learn the fundamentals, um, yeah, that's a good way to go. Uh, and click, click, click. Oh. Yeah, see. Oh, but it, they do take time. So you'd have to set aside like at least a couple hours if you do any of these tutorials. They usually have a time estimate as to how long they take. 
Here's another picture of how Alexa works, but a little bit more detail. Uh, this time it has a bearded fellow talking to Alexa. Oh, by the way, I apologize if I say her name and it, your device keeps coming on. You may want to unplug it. I got my door. That's why head, headphones are good for this. Yeah. <laughs> so he talks to the device. Device goes to the cloud again. So this is where you see the Lambda function is, like I said, that uh, small, relatively small, like 80 to 100 lines of code. Uh, serverless, I guess, right? It's That's the whole, one of the points of Lambda functions. There. They run on a server. You just don't have to, the obligation is not on you to set up the server to get it. It, it just goes and finds a server in the cloud based upon uh, the AWS infrastructure, uh, which is code, you know, the Lambda function is a code of uh, Python or JavaScript, whatever. It does some analysis and works with the JSON files and sends back a response. And I think both the intent and the response are in JSON. And then it does, it could do visual, right? They have visual devices now, actually, where they're called. But, oh, and then I learned a term like a VUI. It's a visual user interface. And I don't know if there's a, a word for like audible user interface. I'm sure. Well, voice, oh, voice user interface. Maybe that's what VUI stands for. Yeah, it's probably voice use to your interface. So. <laughs> Excuse me. Or another, there's all these diagrams. They pretty much say the same thing, but they give you a little bit more interpretation of exactly what's going on. Here's a mention of the JSON file that's in between. And Dennis, we got a quick question. So uh, they want to know yeah. by Lambda function, are we referring to the uh, anonymous single line Python function? Uh, yeah, it's similar in concept. The term Lambda function, I think, was invented probably, oh, good Lord, I don't know when, 60s, 80s, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's one implementation of it, is the Lambda function that's in Python, the one-line thing, um, conceptually is one implementation of it. And uh, and then there's, but there's, uh, but in this case, it refers to a platform independent function that you write that's triggered by an event just like a one line python function so it's triggered by an event and then there is a response to it and it's serverless so you write the function and you put it in your environment and somehow it the environment finds a place you know a platform to run it and all that it's like um the the name didn't originate with python that's just one Im implementation it's like like was and again, I'm not a computer scientist, so anyone in the crowd, please correct me. But um, it's like regex, right? If you know what regex is, that's like uh, kind of a funny little language invented to deal with um, interpreting um, strings, right? And 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 specifying strings, and you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. And every language has its uh, version of it. Every Modern language, it's like usually a library you can pull in. Well, that regex stuff, that was invented, God, I don't know, 70s maybe. And it's been around forever. It's just each language has its version of it. So people will think, see it and they say, oh yeah, that's, you know, C sharp regex or that's whatever. But no, that, that was invented a long time ago. So Lambda is kind of the same thing. It's a concept of a independent function that, uh, you know, triggers some action that may be away from your main routine. Kind of thing. I, I, I hope I answered the question. Again, if there's a better, somebody who knows computer science better than I can chime in, because my background's physics. So. Uh, okay, so I'll put that. Uh, okay, so here we go. So it helps to understand the lingo. Uh, and by lingo, I mean how they describe the interaction, how AWS, the Alexa team, describes the interaction with the Alexa device in the cloud. So there's a wake word, which is, um, maybe I should say Voldemort, right? Instead of this lady's name, would that be better? It won't, uh, yeah, I Alexa. think that'd be uh, for a cooler presentation as well. Or how about uh, Beetlejuice? <laughs> that might be even better, Beetlejuice. So you say the wake word, which for uh, most devices is Beetlejuice. And uh, then you tell Beetlejuice to say, do something, right? And so tell, 
one quick hint if you um have it tied into your music like if you have amazon music or apple music which you can tie in as a skill to your beetlejuice device um try not to use the word play so much because like you'll you'll want to launch a skill and you'll say play such and such and what i found is now there's so much everything's tied into each other instead of playing that skill that game like you know play jeopardy it'll go try to find a song and come back with uh jeopardy like you might say go play jeopardy and i'll come back with the 80s song our love is in whatever that stupid 80s song was something's in jeopardy i can't remember that song uh where the hell made a uh, parody of it so anyway so you say run run actually works better so you got the launch word you got the invocation name so the invocation name is the name of your um you know it's not the name of your application and project that uh, you can actually have it called a different name uh but the invocation name is what you use to make it go run right so the invocation name we're gonna come up with something today i don't know i was playing with this last night like south bay wasp such and such or something but so that's how what turns it on when, but the name of the program could have a different completely different name which is like the name of your project but this is the interaction with the um beetlejuice here uh and then the utterance which is uh I guess a ancillary comment. It says Beetlejuice tell uh, plan my trip. So yeah, it looks like bad English, but you're telling plan my trip, which is the name of uh, a an Alexis. Ah, oh, damn it! I said that. Sorry, oh, I said damn it. Oh, I said it again. Um, <laughs> it's the name of the skill that runs on the device, right? So plan my trip, and then what do you want to do with that skill? I need a vacation. Right? And uh, so utterances are what the user will say to basically set up an action. I like to take a trip next Friday. Uh, and the reason they have to invent these terms to break down a sentence is so that the software can do the analysis on uh, what the user says through these JSON files. Uh, here's an intent plan my trip intent. Yeah, I'm not sure, exactly sure of that line so much what's going on. I think that's the person doesn't say that. I think the person, I think that's part of the uh, logic in, inside the JSON files that triggers various um, uh, Beetlejuice actions. So, uh, there's some great video uh, to tell you what to do. And uh, here it is. Oh, is she actually going to start playing? I think it is. Uh, yeah, but it'll probably bog down. But the, so I have the links to these videos. This is a three-year-old video, which I guess is forever. And it, you know, pause it. And it tells you about the environment and how to, you know, it basically does a, a, a more professional version of what I'm doing now. And this was pretty good. I can't, uh, so this sort of tells you the whole developer console, which I'll go over later, so. But it's one video you may want to watch. It's only like four minutes. I'm not gonna. Then this is the subsequent one. This is the uh, on the the build portion of the console. There's like four or five steps that I covered before and how to write an application. So this covers the build step. And then I feel sorry for the woman that did these videos because apparently the subsequent two are gone. Uh, I couldn't find them. So at uh, the ones on test. I mean, in this video, she sets up, we're going to tell you about build and test and uh, uh, measure and monitor and a couple other steps. And then I couldn't find it. But they've been replaced by uh, other videos. So you'll have no trouble. But I kind of like these ones because these are uh, simpler ones. So you can watch them. Build. This is your option. Yeah, but we're not going to watch her now. And, and by the way, don't forget, you can go on the gear and uh change the speed at which you watch these youtube videos so you can get back some part of your life uh this was actually it looks like uh one that uh this completely replaced uh i don't know whether this is an a official aws video or not but it is com it pretty much completely replaced all those other four and this one's okay too so 
Um, and oddly enough, they're going to run. And OK, so I'm supposed to go do the live demo now uh, before you guys fall asleep. So, so we're going to go through that. And I have another computer up here uh, to my right. I'm going to confess so I don't lose my place. Uh, I'm going to get up to where we are. There we are. OK, so again, if you're following long, long you can go to uh, developer.amazon.com. And uh, you've already, I assume you've already signed up. So let's go do that. And let's see if I can, how do I do that? I need to hit escape. I guess we're done with that. Uh, and launch the console. Okay, so we're gonna launch the console. Uh, so, yeah, that's a good place to start. So go to developer.amazon.com, you click on Alexa. Um, everyone can, Dante, you can see my um, browser window, right? Yep, I see that you're on the uh, Amazon okay. developer site. Yeah, so here I am, I'm at Alexa land. And I think, yeah, so the, there's like 20 different places, ways to get to the console. I don't see the obvious way here. So the, the and the, this is in the charts, you go up to your skill builders, but there's, like I said, I'm sure you can get to the console. You probably just Google Alexa developer console. Oh, I said her name. All right. All right. It's so hard not to say it. I could just unplug my device, but then I, again. Okay, so this is, um, this is the beginning of the developer console. This is like a list of all the skills you've either written or played with or whatever. And uh, so you should be able to get here without any trouble once you've signed up for an account. And again, use the same user ID or email that you use to register your Echo device. And uh, oh, my dog wants to get in my room now. Um, so this is a list of all the skills I built. Uh, ARF, I wonder what, oh, I know what I was doing with that one. I'm not gonna tell you it's my secret skill to make a million dollars. So. Uh, <laughs> but so you get to this page, you hit create skill, okay? So I'm gonna do that. So we're starting from scratch. We're going to create a new skill, and I don't know what to call it. Uh, so again, this is the name of your skill, your project. It's not the invocation name, which is what you say to Beetlejuice to get her to launch or him to launch uh, your skill. So I'm going to call this I don't know S B Was Project. What's that? And I'm going to pick English because I'm a dumb American. I only know one language. Actually, I know a few other languages, just, but just to order food. Uh, let's see. So pick custom. Uh, and that allows you to, you can pick one of these other ones, you know, if you want. But for today's little example, I'm going to pick custom. Um, and I'm more skilled in Python than I am in JavaScript. Uh, so I will pick that, but you know, you can, you can use other languages too. Everybody knows Python nowadays, right? So now I probably hit a go button. Yeah. Create skill. So name the project, pick custom, uh, Python. And again, this is all in the charts. So they have to worry about taking notes or anything. Uh, here we go. So this might take a minute or so. Yep. Just going okay. Uh, so I know this looks like the last screen, but it's different. So I could start from scratch. I'm not going to, I'm not smart enough. Uh, I'm going to pick something pretty easy. So I'm going to pick the high, low skill game. Uh, the nice thing about that is if you have, uh, kids, you can teach about binary searches and, uh, that's the kind of father I am. Some fathers take them to the amusement park. Well, not even more, but they used to. I teach them about binary searches. So. All right. Um, so then you say continue with that template. So this might take a minute. Oh, it does say we'll take about a minute. So it'll probably take two minutes because I'm using Zoom and, and this thing. 
So right now, it's, it, what it's doing, it's creating a voicemail. So it's going through all the generic um, Alexa capabilities that it, oh, I said the word, that it has to uh, understand English or whatever language you're using. And I guess it's also using some of the skills associated with this. And I'm picking this template because, you know, it, it pretty much already works. And then we can play with it and change some things around. And uh, so it's building my environment, my web-based development environment. And, uh, you know, it's easy peasy, right? Uh, full build. Successful, thank you. It's reminding me I need to change the invocation name. And uh, if I'm new to it, it will send me the tutorial, but guess what? If you click that, it'll send you to GitHub. So don't, don't do that. Because then, and like I said, half the links don't work on it. Not GitHub's fault, it's just the developer is just, you know, it's a few years old. So, um, so let's talk about what do we see here and get rid of these little pop-ups. So on the right is sort of a checklist and it's got these things checked. I don't think they're really done, oddly enough, but they gave a little green check next to them. We still have to go through them. So we still have to go through these four steps or three of them uh, at least, um, maybe not the fourth one. And then on the, so that's what these little things are on the, the right. On the left, and the first time I saw this environment, I was a little confused because it was like late at night and I was trying to get this done. It's like two in the morning or something. And it just, but now that I've seen it a couple of times, like, oh, I get this. So on the left is like, um, what would you call this? It's like a project summary of all the um, facets of your, your project. Uh, the invocation is the name that makes it run. This interaction model, you don't have to worry about that too much. There's a JSON editor in case you want to deal with the intricacies of how the two the programs send each other data. Uh, and I don't think you even have to worry about a lot of this stuff down here. Uh, so it's pretty easy. This is like if you want to get an advanced stuff. So it's mostly just you have to set up an invocation name. So I could click on the left or the right. Oh, I'll just click on the right today. So there was a question that, uh, or what we're looking at, is that because of the high-low game skill option was selected? Yeah. Does that give it a pre-configured so, configuration? Yeah. So what we're looking at is the generic web-based development environment. A lot of it's done for you already because we picked a template. Um, so we probably can skip some steps. If you were building an application from scratch, you, we would probably have to do some magic that I'm not going to go through today because it was done for me. Um, but the but the general interface that you're looking at, it's not specific to the high-low template. This is the standard console development environment, console-based development environment for writing a skill. And like I said, there's also other ways to write skills like a, a typical, you know, uh, textual-based development environment or CLI or whatever. And, we're using the easy one, we're using the web-based one. Does that answer the question? I think so, it makes sense to me. Is, uh, were you able to get that, Joe? I think we can probably move Yes, on. thank you. Oh, okay. okay, great. So one thing much. I neglected to mention, um, on the top here, uh, which actually might help you make more sense of the display, because like I said, it's kind of wordy and messy. Uh, these menu items, like your skills, so that's your list of all the projects you've done, right? Um, the current project we're on, South Bay Wasp, um, and then the activities you have to go through. You have to build it, you have to code it. Oh, in this case, the codes are rewritten for us because I picked the template. And you have to test it. And then this other stuff on the right, like distribution, certification, you don't have to worry so much because um, we're just going to deploy it in my local device. And uh, okay, so let's see, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, I actually wanted to mention, I got stuck. So maybe this uh, little talk will help somebody. I got stuck originally because I thought that I had to go 
through the whole certification process to, because all I want to do is just make it run in my Echo Dot in the kitchen. And I thought, oh my God, I have to like send a letter to Jeff Bezos and or Bezos or whatever. You know, and like, no, you just, you don't. <laughs> if you, all you want to do is have it run on your Echo in the kitchen or whatever room it's in, uh, it's, it's really, really super easy. So, and you don't have to write all that stuff. So, uh, you know, and like I said before, to just get acquainted with this, just try to do the simplest thing, which is just grab a template and modify it. And then later you can just do, there's a myriad of integration you can do with, with uh, other Amazon products. Oh, anyway, so let's let's figure out where we were. We gotta get okay. So we gotta change the name of this thing because we don't want to call it Change Me. I guess it says that because it wants to be changed. So what shall we call it? Um. Uh, so I guess I'll call it. Uh, uh, and this is the actual invocation. This is the invoke yes. name. Uh, so I'm, we're going to call it. Um, uh, Okay, you can't use any capital letters. See, it's prompting me. Don't use capital letters. Why? I don't know. Okay. I don't know if I can put, can I put, uh, uh, oh, I can put punctuation. I don't know if it'll do. Uh, is that? I love it. Yeah, I just popped into my brain, so why not? <laughs> it's got nothing to do with nothing, but it just popped in. All right. Um, so that's how it's going to run. And uh, I'm going to save model. That's important. And uh, I guess we should go to build model next. So save model and build model. And this takes a while. Uh, it's, again, doing a lot of work now. If you want to alter the code, the one thing I learned, which maybe it'll save some of you sometime, once you've gone through the build model, it's doing all the training for all the English that's associated with it and the invocation and, you know, so you get like different versions of it. So somebody pronounces it differently. So this takes a while. Once you've actually done all that and you want to modify the code, you don't have to come back here to, to rebuild. You don't want to do that because that'll take up too much time because then it's just relearning stuff. That already... If you just change the code, there's a, um, I think you hit save and deploy which you'll see on the next line. Did it finish? Oh, build successful, great. So it built um, the software and all everything that's needed to uh, interpret the invocation and that kind of thing. Oh my God, my dog's barking at me. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> we got a puppy. Hold on, hold on a second. Hey, can somebody let her outside? All right. Uh, so, we, so, so we can look at the code, but to be honest with you, you don't even have to do this step right now, uh, but I guess we will. So built, there's the Lambda function. So it's not a one line Lambda function that you're thinking of in Python, but it's a similar concept. This is the serverless um, code that runs. You just, you write it. I didn't write it. It's all there in Python and it works. Um, it's always nice to use someone else's code that's written, you know, someone that professionally wrote the code because you can get, learn a lot just by reading it and seeing how they wrote it, see if they used clean code, code uh, methods and that kind of thing. Uh, there's a bunch of buttons up here if you want to integrate some cool stuff with it, like a, a database or S3 storage, which is like on, online. Uh, uh, disk drives, I guess. Uh, you want to integrate with AWS. All these things, if I click one of these things, I'm sure I'd break it immediately. So I'm not touching any of them. But if you know what you're doing, you can integrate all this cool stuff with it. So this code should work. And, uh, but let's test it. Okay. So you go to test. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm not going to change the code yet. And uh, so uh, one thing, um, you can get stuck right now is you have to realize, um, oh, I don't see much here, but that's because uh, test is disabled for this skill. You have to turn that on. And I don't know why they make you do that, but 
I guess it makes you feel better if you get to click on something and know it works. I don't know. I don't know why they bring that up with that turned off. But it's like when they first invented cake mixes, by the way, they just it would just add water and you're done. But then they realized they weren't selling, so they had to make it so you had to add an egg and you just meant like you felt like you're doing something. This kind of reminds me of that. Um, so I think it will actually run now. So this is the simulator on the left. And it tells you what to do. Open it with your invocation name. And this is the, the Echo simulator. So you don't need a device to play with this development environment. I'm going to, for the heck of it, just try this once, the audio part. I don't know if it'll work because I'm using Zoom and this thing at the same time. Uh, but I want to I want to say the name verbally, just to see if I... run Dante's Inferno. Welcome to the high low guessing game. You have played zero times. Would you like to play? So um, one thing I forgot to do before I started sharing my screen, uh, Dante, did you hear her respond? I did actually hear her response. Oh, that's funny. I don't know how, but I think it, it, it could be my my um, speaker in my ear bleeding over to my microphone. It, was it clear or did it sound muffled? I was fairly clearish. Maybe okay, a little so I guess, I, guess maybe, but it was... I thought I had to click on something to make it so you'd hear it, but I guess not in Zoom land. Not anyway. So it, it worked, right? It. Um, and then it's a guessing game. You can, you try to guess, uh, oh, first I have to tell it yes. So now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking to it. I'm just gonna type it in. I just wanted to see if Dante's Inferno works. Great. Try saying a number to start the game. So it wants me, I don't know, it's, I'm surprised it didn't tell me to guess. I'm supposed to guess a number between zero and 100 or one and 100 and then She'll say uh, it's too big or too small. So let's try that. Uh, so I'm going to guess 50 because I'm familiar with a binary search. 50 is too low. Try saying a larger number. And everyone knows I should say 75. 75 is too high. Try saying a smaller number. Now here's where I get into trouble because I, I have to do arithmetic. 62. 62 is too high. Try saying a smaller number. Uh, what was the, uh, the, 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 uh, why did you pick 62 after the 50 and 75? The logic? Oh, okay. So a binary, so this is something you need to teach your kids. Um, so binary, the quickest way, if you're going to uh, try to guess uh, something that has a, a binary answer to it, is if it's ranked, um, if the guess, if the possible answers are ranked, it's the quickest way to guess is just to um, guess in the middle, and uh, and you know, and then based on that, you guess in the middle again of that region. You keep cutting it in half, and it's oh, quick, okay, okay. On the average, it's the quickest way to find something that's ranked. And the 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 neat part of this is you tell your kid, hey, um, oh gosh. Let's see if I get this without screwing up. Yeah, so uh, pick a number between one and 1,000, and I bet I can guess it uh, in 10 yes or no questions. Or, or, oh, no, you don't say it that way. That's stupid. Sorry. I got to sit there. I pick a number between one and 1,000. How many yes or no questions do you think I would need to guess it, right? And it actually this works with a lot of adults too. And they'll say, wow, a thousand numbers. I don't know, 500 guesses, you know? And uh, they'll say that, you know, something like that. And uh, you say, now I can guess it in uh, 10 or less guesses by using the binary. And then you say, well, no, you're crazy. It's going to take you a lot more than 10 guesses. That's, and then, you know, you make your kid feel foolish after you do it. Or you make him feel like you're really smart and you don't tell them why until they're older. Yeah, I like the latter. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll, you know. Um, well, whoa, dad's a genius. Yeah. And it's all because, you know, two to the 10th is about, is 1024, right? So, 
Hopefully I got that right. Hi, Nikki. The dog just came in. All right. Uh, so anyway, you know, we keep trying. I don't know. I, I should probably cut this off. But once I've started, I can't stop, you know. 56 is too low. Try saying a larger number. 53 is too low. Try saying a larger number. <sighs> 55 is too low. Try oh. saying a larger number. Oh, 56 is too See, I screwed it up because uh, the dog came in, distracts me. <laughs> because it said 56 is too low. I should have been guessing the other half. But anyway, you get the idea. Uh, now, the point of this isn't, you know, building this game because this game's fun if you play it like twice and then you hate it. But uh, you go back to code. And by the way, if I can do uh, just for the heck of it, uh, let's see if I can get Alexa to run it. Uh, or could you go into it just real quick what the JSON is doing on the right? Oh, input, I'm sorry. Yeah, output. yeah, no, I'd be happy to. So the JSON is how the different, uh, what would we call them? Components. Hey, there's a good word. Uh, different software components are talking to each other and talking to me. So when I talk to uh, my microphone, then my microphone grabs the audio signals sends it to the cloud, sort of the base Alexa stuff. Alexa interprets the sounds as speech and then creates this file to send to my, uh, what do you call it? Lambda function to figure out what to do with it. Then it sends a JSON function back to uh, the Alexa base software and, and then Finally, it all comes back to me. So you can see, and again, I maybe I didn't explain what a JSON language is. It's 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 a human readable structured language that computer systems use to talk to each other, to formulate higher concepts. And what is it? Uh, JavaScript object notation or something to that effect? What what JSON stands for? Yeah, yeah, that must, yeah, that's it. Right. So it's JavaScript based. And there's also another thing called YAML, Y-A-M-L. I don't know what it stands for. It's basically the same thing. It's just a different, just, uh, <laughs> excuse me, syntax. I noticed right. on the right-hand side, it looks like we're trying to guess 61. I guess we could cheat. Yeah, you can the... see it. On the left-hand side is me talking to uh, Beetlejuice saying, I guess, 61. That's the left. And on the right... Uh, is the response from my uh, Lambda function where, uh, and you can see like the last guess and the next guess and that kind of thing. So these are the devices, um, uh, the different software components talking to each other. And, uh, and then the structure of this JSON file was determined. So if you were writing the code from scratch, you'd have to, excuse me, you'd have to, uh, write the Python code, and then write some JSON uh, structure, which is in on the previous page, that determines the the general shape of these two files. So that's kind of what's going. Hopefully that made some sense. I explained it as well as I understand it, which isn't perfectly. So let's do the fun part. Okay. Uh, the fun part is actually to change the code. And uh, so, I don't know, what shall we do here? So this is the Python code, I hope, yeah. So let's just look through it and let's find, uh, okay, so here's uh, Beetlejuice talking to me. I'm thinking of a number between zero and 100. Uh, uh, oh, most uh, amazing. The handsome uh, uh, um, nice person. I don't know. Okay, so that should take. Let's let's not quit there. Uh, let's look for. Um, I guess I can use the search function. 
low. Uh, oh, something is too, so here is something is too low. Uh, person with more hair than Dante. Uh, let's see, what else should we change? Anything else? I could look for high. Let's look for low again, make sure I didn't. Yeah, I'm sure I did it right. Uh... Okay, great. And then uh, we'll look for a high, high. And uh, let's see. And let's see. Uh, blank is too high. Try saying a smaller number. Uh, like your IQ. I actually put in, um, when the first time I modified this, I put in some uh, random insults to my son, who's 25, he can take it. And then I had him play this game, but I didn't tell him that ahead of time. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and it came back and it called him all sorts of things that I really don't want to repeat. Uh, it was a bit salty, let's put it that way. So, And you have to spell it in a funny way in order for uh they get past the filters things. yeah so you have to be a little creative uh i think what i need to do is hit deploy because i don't see a save button oh no there it is right there next to deploy. save i'm gonna hit deploy to i forget what that with the yeah well no it says deploy before testing your skill yeah so you do need to do that all right so hopefully it's in here it worked and um, oh, it's, it's, and like I said, you don't have to go back to build in order to do what we're doing right now. Uh, this takes enough time, but um, cause you just modifying your Lambda function here and you don't have to fiddle with your JSON structure. If I did, I'd break it guaranteed. So let's see if it works now, I hope. Maybe I'll try to make the audio because maybe that's more interesting. Run Dante's Inferno. Welcome to the high low guessing game. You have played zero times. Would you like to play? Yes. Oh, I have to hit the microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Great. Try saying a number to start the game. Uh, 50. 50 is too low. Person with more hair than Dante. Try saying a larger number. By the way, Dante, it's been so long. I can't remember. Do you have hair? Uh, full head, but it's uh, I usually keep it pretty pretty tight. Sure. You do a yeah, clipper, so, clippers with a half, half guard. Yeah, so in case anybody hasn't noticed, uh, I'm lying here when I say more hair than... Dante. Yeah, well, you know, it wouldn't take much technically because. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm a bit right. her suit. Uh, <laughs> so you can worry, look that up later. All right. Uh, okay, well, let's try again. Let's try. Uh, so too low. 99. 99 is too low. Person with more hair than Dante. <laughs> try saying a larger number. 100. Oh, no, that's no good. Congratulations. I should have said 101. 100 is the correct guess. I'm not You guessed the number in three guesses. Oh. Would you like to play a new game? Yes. Oh, we want to see Great. the, uh, Try the other answer. Try saying a number to start the game. 10,000. 10,000 is too high. Try saying a smaller number, like your IQ. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go and to proof the proof's in the pudding is that an, that's an expression i don't know uh i'm gonna see if it'll run um, my the thing in my kitchen and how do i do that i guess i could hold the microphone up to it and um you can hear it respond to prove that it actually i was just going to ask what's the is there a last step to how do you deploy this thing locally? Right. So that's a fun thing. And I probably wasted 
90 minutes trying to answer that question the first time I did that. And the answer is um, nothing, <laughs> which is why I couldn't figure it out because I believe it's already deployed because I use the same. Oh, your same account. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the dog is at my feet. Interesting. So, yeah, because she's upset. Okay, I'll be right there. Yeah, I would have spent I would have spent uh, a good half a day googling <laughs> how the hell do you deploy this thing? <laughs> yeah, right. And I, dear Jeff Bezos, please, I promise I won't say anything bad about you. Deploying myself. All right. So, uh, all right. I hope this works. So, let's see. I'm going to my kitchen and my device. Oh, Alexa, are you working? As far as I can tell, I'm working. All right. If so, you're experiencing trouble. Please give feedback through the Alexa app. Yeah, I'll, yeah we can hear. All right. At least I can yeah. hear. All right. <clears throat> So you're Alexa. not gonna you're not pressing the uh, the, the oh. button in the testing environment, right? You're no, right. I'm not. I'm not pressing any buttons. Alexa, run Dante's Inferno. Welcome to the high low guessing game. You have played one times. Would you like to play? Yes. Great. Try saying a number to start the game. We should get uh, who's participating. Maybe we should have someone guess. <laughs> someone else. <laughs> One hundred one. Somebody put a number in there in the chat. One hundred one is too high. <laughs> Try saying a smaller number, like your IQ. <laughs> <laughs> 40, 42. Okay, we're getting some submissions. The high low game skill can. Okay, I'm going to put my ear earpiece in front of Alexa, Alexa, so I can't hear you. So. Okay, uh, say it. Forty two. The high low game skill can't help you with that. Try guessing a number between zero and 100. Please guess a number between zero All right, and 100. All right, so the, the earpiece doesn't work. I'm pulling you off the earpiece. Computer, so it's already popped. Okay, Alexa, run down please in front of Welcome to the high low guessing game. This would you like to play? Exactly. <laughs> the high low game still is a second attack. If you come up with a number between zero and one hundred, and you try to guess it by seeing a number in that range, would you like to play? Can, can you hear me, Dante? Yeah. Okay, say something. The high low game still. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> if you come up with a number between zero and one hundred, and you try to guess it by seeing a number in that range. Would you like to play? Yes. Okay. Okay. Try saying a number to start the game. 42. 42. Try guessing a number between 0 and 100. 42. 42 is too low. Person with more hair than Dante. Try saying a large number. 78. 78 is too low. Pressing is more hair than Dante. Try saying a larger number. 92. 92 is too high. Try saying a smaller number, like your IQ. <laughs> 85. Try saying a smaller number. 85? Wait, did it get that one? 85 is too low. Person with more hair than Bonko. Try saying a larger number. 88? Did I ever say that? Try saying a larger number. 88. 88 is too high. Try saying a smaller number, like your IQ. Shit, what was the one? Was the... 84? The high low game still can't help you with that. 87? 87. The high low game still can't help you with that. I thought. Oh, wait, did it start over? No, you're good. Say 82. 282. Too high. Okay, I'll see. 
congratulations. Oh, Fox Android for the win. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> yeah. So you get the idea. I mean, I'm going to plug my ear for you back to you. Oh. Hey, you won. Yeah, what's my prize? Do I? I don't know. You get a t-shirt. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. A dirty sock. I guess. Yeah. Um, it's it still like cocky. Okay. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, I couldn't cheat. I couldn't look at the screen and see what. Uh, no. What number? Oh, it did, you you couldn't cheat it. It didn't. I don't think it. No, it no, no. It wasn't updating anything. Back and forth. It's just yeah. throwing the guesses back and forth. The number was stored locally in the in the Lambda function. Oh, okay. I don't think it. Yeah, I don't think it kept it. So yeah, you're always being the hacker. You're always trying to figure out how to cheat, right? Yeah, always. Yeah, shortcut. Yeah. Um, that, that's that's pretty awesome. That's um the the uh, I'm really surprised about the deployment. The fact that if you're using your account that you already use for those devices that it's already pushing it up there. There's nothing you need to do. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I was be, expecting a big, um, a I big hassle thing. actually to like publish something, put it in some thing somewhere. And then, yeah, this is way easier. I'm sure like the action to get it actually like, you know, certified and stuff is a bigger ordeal, but I mean, I think this is pretty awesome to do these things for your own, you know, for your own house or for your own devices is, is pretty awesome. It's fairly yeah, painless. It was probably about three o'clock in the morning when I figured that out. Um, so let's see. Well, I hate to do this without full screen. Oh, maybe I do this. Oh, enter full screen. Oh, there we go. Um, so there's other videos and stuff. So we did it. We did a live demo and, uh, I did that. I did that. I did that. Uh, you can use different languages. Uh, okay, good. So biggest challenges, uh, yeah, we talked about the deploying it locally. Uh, way too many, so you get overwhelmed. That Hopefully the one thing that, you, that I helped you with with this silly talk was that um, I kind of trimmed all the noise away so that you, if you want to say, gee, I'd really like to quickly fiddle with Alexa and come out right. Um, <laughs> anyway, you can... Uh, you can do that and you won't get distracted by all the other weird stuff. You can just grab these charts and do it. And um, cause I waste a lot of time just getting distracted. So uh, more ideas related to this. Uh, there was an education template. I don't know if you know, saw it go by at 90 miles an hour, but I mentioned it before you can upload a spreadsheet of Q and A and that might be fun for search study. Uh, I've said this way too many times, but um, I got to go learn GitHub or have somebody teach to me. Uh, integrating this with AWS would be cool. You know, have it launch a, a job on AWS. Um, integrate it with, and I say more machine learning because hopefully you realize this, that um, the smarts that it took to understand all the random ramblings that I and Dante said took quite a bit of machine learning uh, to understand. So it was doing, it gives you that for free, all the speech recognition stuff that couldn't have been done so easily 30, 20 years ago, or whatever, 10 years ago, I don't know. Just, you got for free, but you can integrate it with a lot more machine learning, obviously. And AWS has several different ways to do that. Uh, you can have integrate, you can integrate with the simple notification system. I don't know what that's on this. You know, you can have it send you um, email or text, I guess. Uh, if you want to, that'd be cool. Trying other coding languages, right? We played with Python today. Uh, we could use JavaScript. And by the way, there's, I think there's more templates with JavaScript. If you're more comfortable with JavaScript, go ahead and use it because I think you'll have more code to play with anyway. Uh, the, uh, oh, play with the international language add-ons. I mentioned those. Uh, <laughs> there's like Indian ones, you know. Asian, Indian, obviously, and just all sorts of accents. Uh, you can play with, that'd be fun. I don't know how to do that. Uh, and actually do something 
don't just fool around with it like I did. Actually do something useful, write an original app, get it certified, and uh, and get it deployed on people's devices. And maybe, who knows, maybe even can make a buck or two. Uh, I know every once in a while, Alexa tries to sell me something. So uh, is that the last chart? It probably is my last chart. It is my last chart. So yeah, that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I got a, it was fun doing the presentation.